elements around you. The recognition of when churches form in other life forms around you. Your ability to be in awe of it when it's external to you and within you. Life is when you are organized around the love of spirit, that identity, church. Being unalive or dead is when you are conscious, you have structure, but you're not creative. There's no creativity because creativity only comes from the love of spirit. Hanging on to the past, dwelling on the past, is a state of dead. Being alive and in awe of your whole life, what is now, whatever could be, that's life. The missing link is God. It's only a matter of figuring out that there's only one God. It's what can bear all of this. You exist because it wants to love you. It extends free will and things happen because of that. But it's always there to correct it. All you have to do is intend for it. Your whole reality will be coordinated around you. It's only a matter of whether you are mindful of that, if you are aware that it's happening. You can't fake, you can't force yourself to want to know God. But within all of you is something that misses God. God is home. Home is not a place in time and space. God is life. Godlessness is death. Worshiping a deity is death. It's slavery. God is your home. You don't need to believe or disbelieve me. If you want to know God, I mean, hey, if there is one God, one spirit, and you're curious, why would you look in a book? In your life, perhaps maybe you've played around with what I told you in phase three now, and you might begin to observe something. That lesson was intentional. Whatever you're worried about, you ever notice how that manifests and cues back to you from life? Whatever you hope for, whatever you want, your mind ripples out there and life responds to your mind as well. And that will be conflicting. However, when spirit innervates you, it's completely different. Your mind may be projecting out there and you're getting a reflection of your projection from other consciousness, but if your mind is open to knowing the spirit, your spirit will ripple out there and it will take priority. It's only a matter of your mind being open to it. That's it. If you know you're being taught, and every single one of you will be taught right now, it's always ready. It is only a matter of whether you are ready. If you want God to repair you, that doesn't mean that you need to know what's wrong with you. It will begin to show you with your reality. Listen to the songs that seem to play when you come into this establishment or that establishment. What billboards happen to catch your eye in any given moment as opposed to other ones? What are people saying around you? Remember, this is a template of existence. It is the world of the symbolic. The Spirit will begin teaching you right now. It always has been, but if your ego is in denial of it, you ignore it. You're ignorant of it. You follow your ego, your mind, in this endless labyrinth of insanity. When Spirit commands your mind and creates that church within you, and you're not under control when that happens, that's when you feel alive. The what is the why? The why is the what? Your questions lie down and take a nap. 
as you are alive in observance of God. You know as you sit what you think is by yourself and alone and maybe lonely. When you open up the innervation of the Spirit into your reality, you're not alone. It lets you know that with great certainty. You're not alone. And when you know that, you can bear being conscious. It loves you. The show Andy Griffith is kind of a story of spirit. With Barney Fife, Andy would metaphorically be the spirit, right? And Barney Fife is a polarized, ego-driven person who suffers from extreme negativity and extreme elated positivity. Creates a role for himself that's elated and overly positive. Andy is the spirit and laughs at that and allows that, but tries to bring him back into balance and always makes him feel like he has value. Never wants to embarrass him. Let's him think that he's done something that he hasn't done. And there are things that he has done as well and gets the same acknowledgement for it. The protection of his own self-esteem. I feel like Barney Fife sometimes. I know that sometimes my positive ego becomes elated in my life and I think I'm accomplishing things that I'm not and the spirit just lets that go, of course. It has no desire to embarrass me. But there are other things that I do that are incredible that it knows of. What is the difference? One is an identity involving spirit where I am going along for the ride and so is it in this expression and the other is ego-driven. It has no desire to embarrass me when I get things wrong because the meaning is to have awe. People will spend their whole lives some trying to become quote enlightened that's just a, a formulation of your own prison. The Dharma? <laughs> that's Wonderland. That's the rabbit hole. All you're doing is changing your experience of the template. There are no answers there. Which is why some of these people experience the abyss. If you want to be enlightened, just know that God loves you and everything you see. When you know that, then you know the meaning. When you become involved with that and see that it doesn't matter how calloused someone's ego is, underneath them is a child that wants to be loved. It's funny, like, I see how the Spirit coordinates all these things. And I see, I recognize when it puts me in a role, like, I was walking along a path on a lake yesterday. And